trying to make a form for our stuff, for our foam. Eighteen months ago, we purchased a hurricane-damaged sailboat with the dream of sailing her around the world. We started documenting this adventure each week for all of our family and friends to follow along. Since then, we've been learning, laughing, and working harder than we ever have in our lives to make this dream come true. Thanks for joining our adventure. Is it coming off? <laughs> Pieces. 5200 a piece of trim on. There we go. Hey guys, welcome to a typical day around here. Well, I guess we don't get to reuse any of this crap. Abby, you don't want vegetables? I don't know why. The kids are keeping busy doing things we ask them to, and we are doing projects as usual. This one's Abigail's. Mine has vegetables. Now we'll just wait three minutes. Are we ready to fill this up? We have some um, four pound density foam, which is a structural foam that we're going to put in place. But I needed to have some backing in here to keep the foam from just leaking leaking into uh, other parts of the boat. And so I've kind of filled in some spots that are a problem area and it's expanded a little further than I like so I'm gonna have to cut out some of the foam that I just put in which is okay because it's easy to cut out. But then it'll give us the, the backing for pouring in that structural foam. What are you doing? I'm trying to make a form for our stuff, for our foam. You can see what a pain it is to have that tarp blowing around and have us try to deal with above and below today with open hatches. We're trying to clean these hatches off so that we can get them put back in. But um, the 5200 they were put on in is pretty reluctant. Katie and Gabe are with Todd while the little girls are at home with me while I edit. Oh, kids, it's universal. One of the things that we're trying to do with these hatches is raise them up a little bit off the deck so that it gives running water more of a lift to keep water from coming underneath them. And in order to do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the support part of that out of that six pound foam. Um, make myself a shelf that I can sculpt and round over and then I'll fiberglass over that several layers so that that'll give it the strength. I need to create a dam for that foam. So I think I'm going to try using some of this and it's a, it's a corner guard you get from Lowe's. I think these were two dollars a piece and I've, I've cut this board with the radiuses I want 
and I'm going to try and see if it's going to work to bend it around this and make it my mold. And I'm going to just snip the L like that. I'm going to snip it in several places. How many spoon drifters does it take to film a project like this? One to edit it, one to hold the camera, one to do the cutting, the other one to hold the other end, huh? Rotate this around. And we now have a frame that we can tape to the deck up on top all the way around. That when we fill it with foam, it'll fill up, you know, roughly the top of that, and then I can sculpt it from there. We're tripping with beliefs, ooh, and our hearts were young and free. We had set our minds to leave, I face the world on wheels, cross the borders of Morocco, take a journey to Dubai, find the pirates stuck in this new land. I guess now it's time to go upstairs, pull off the tarps and take a look at it. It's pretty good from up here. Full expansion. We had set our minds to leave. Face the world on wheels. Cross the border. So one of the challenges that I have, let me see if I can just show you on this diagram really quick here. The inside of our boat headliner is curved like this. The outside is also curved like that. And this right here and this right here is where our hatches would come through. Now this distance here is narrower than this distance here. From the headliner there's a lot more space in in between here so i when i'm building this hatch up i need to try to have it match on the top more than the bottom so i can't just do equal equal height from the bottom up and so with that heavy crown it's going to be really hard to make a straight line i also have to have that top be dead flat in order for the hatch to bed properly if it's got any irregularities or any curves to it then the hatch is not going to seal. And the whole point of taking these things out in the first place was to make them seal. So, all right, what I did, I created this board right here and have it set on the deck. That gives me a fixed measurement all the way around that I can at least translate the measurement down to the inside of this form that I have made. So I'm going to set this board on the ends, which is the low spot and I'm going to make a mark down at 1 and 5 sixteenths down and that'll get me started but we're going to have to sand this thing down a little bit more in order to uh, make the shape we want and we'll build it back up with the fiberglass cloth. Okay I use something uh, thin and flexible to connect the dots and draw a line around the hatch opening so now I got to try to get a uh, saw and see if I can cut a straight line or fairly straight line and uh, get ourselves a flat top. Let's see how Dropped in a hatch to see how it looks. So you can see not too bad here. This is actually pretty good. Right here though, it's a little tight. 
corner a little bigger again. Overall that one looks pretty good so I'm just going to make a couple marks on where I should remove some material. Not too bad. So, finished hatch. That looks pretty good all the way around. Um, I think I'm happy with that. I think we can fiberglass that in and make it pretty nice fit. I need to do um, put a couple fillets in on the uh, upper part of the hatches where they meet the deck so that it's easier for the fiberglass to actually roll around them. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to just mix up a double batch of epoxy and I'm going to mix some cabosil with it to make it a little thicker. So now I usually have two people here to help put it in the bag but I only have me today. So all right, let's go upstairs and see what we can see here. So I basically want to go around here. So one thing you guys need to know is that Todd filmed most of this episode by himself after the kids and I had headed to Alaska for Christmas ahead of him. I'm pretty impressed. What do you use to cut your fiberglass? Um, we have heard that a like a Fiskars rotary cutter and one of those self-healing mats works really well. I don't know if it does or not. I haven't tried it yet, but we bought a set to give it a try. Now this fiberglass here that we bought, it's, it's a 7725, I think is the number. It's called Twill fiberglass and it's an eight ounce fiberglass and it's supposed to have really good qualities of bending around corners and into corners. Ooh, retractable blade guard. All right, so I made a couple marks on here and I got a little straight edge here I'm gonna use. That's all I got right now. So not too bad. It actually cut it, cut it pretty clean. Um, I'm going to cut this up into a little bit smaller chunks just to make it easy to install to start with. All right, I've been doing some epoxy in this morning on my hatch openings in this boat, which you can see. This one to do. Mix, 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 mix. All right, gotta do a little priming. I gotta do a little priming around this guy. I think I just got epoxy in my hair. I leaned my head over and bumped the side. <laughs> now you, you remember a couple videos ago, my wife talking about how come she wears that handkerchief on her head to keep her hair from getting epoxied. Maybe I need to start doing that too because I had to do a acetone rinse with a rag and then I washed it out with some water. But I'm hoping that I got it. I guess I'll find out in a few hours if I can still run a comb through it or not.
good to me. So this is the total boat epoxy fairing. It's really great stuff. It looks something like that. Pretty uniform in color. Now I'm going to put it on those. I'll put a link in the description below to the video that we did telling more about this product. It's so cold this morning that it took me probably two and a half hours worth of monkeying around to get the diesel started. And so I don't dare turn it off because I don't want to get stranded here. Well, they look pretty good for starters. The fairing compound, first coat of that is on. It dried, which is good. But now it's uh, 52 degrees and blowing uh, 25 knots, roughly. And <laughs> It's a pretty cold day up there, so I'm not going to be able to sand it today. And I'm going to have to secure these uh, covers that I have on top. Usually our wind is blowing from the back to the front. This particular cold front though is blowing from the front to the back so it gets underneath here a little bit more but I think it'll be all right. There's a place I have found in the shade on the ground. In our next episode we'll all be back to the boat again and we'll be working hard on this project. Be sure to give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to make sure you don't miss anything. Only me. No one can guess what I came there to see.